Hi, everyone. Happy Halloween. Uh, it's Marisa and Graham and Gavin, the geology gents. Uh, we're happy to spend our Halloween week with you all. Thanks for joining us for our special um, special edition Halloween rock and pop up. We're going to be talking about a very spooky topic today, caves. I also wanted to mention before we get started that uh, the gents have launched a new blog series with the museum called Rock Record, Musings on the Mineral World. And the very first installment of that blog was on the same topic. So I'll put a link um, in the comments so that you can go explore caves in further detail too. Um, but we are lucky enough to have Gavin and Graham in the flesh today to talk about caves. So welcome guys. Thank you, Marisa. Thanks, Marisa. Yeah, we're, so we're gonna, this is actually, yeah, right, like you said, right along with our, the topic of our blog post. So if you want to dive in a little deeper, uh, definitely check that out. Uh, you can, can dwell a little bit more on these cave topics. Um, but for today, yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna delve right into the earth and learn a little bit about caves. And Gavin, usually we're talking about an idea, a geologic concept, but today we're actually going to bring folks along on a little bit of, of a, a geologic expedition of our own, right? Oh, that sounds great, Graham. You're so right. Usually we're talking about something that's a little abstract we can't see with our hands, but these caves we actually went down in and explored, so this is a first for the gents. That's right, yeah. So will you say we dive right in? Oh. Pun intended, let's do it. So a cave, like, you know, we often think about caves, we hear cave, it, it brings an idea right to mind. Um, and so I feel like it's good for us to just start out by saying like, what really is a cave? So Gavin, clue us in, what makes, what makes something a cave? Well, Graham, Caves have a really simple definition, and I love that about, the, about this geologic feature. They're just a cavity in the ground that is longer than it is wide. And so caves are any, any cavernous feature, but they come in a lot of different shapes and sizes and rock types, right? That's right, yeah. And today we'll go a little bit into those different rock types, the different ways caves form, but you're so right. Like a cave is just, it's kind of a, a straightforward concept in geology. And because it's such a simple definition, there's this awesome geological diversity that goes into the sorts of caves there are. So there's, you know, we'll focus on the type of cave. Today, we'll focus on the, the sorts of caves we find around Santa Cruz, but at the end, we'll take a minute to explore the different types of caves. But, you know, caves are deep and mysterious, and we don't know a lot about them, but, you know, we love to put things in perspective on Earth, Gavin. So can you help us put, you know, caves into perspective of the greater Earth system? Yeah, Graham. So when we think of caves like how deep are caves really especially like especially the ones that we can see um, in santa cruz and so i like that you have here graham you have the deepest cave that we know of this is the very very that's a tough one the very cave in georgia the country of georgia and that cave is 2.2 kilometers deep so about a mile in depth and so for just for something relative to something around Santa Cruz, Loma Prieta Peak is about half of that. So they could go pretty deep in the ground, but Graham, how does this relate to the crust itself? Ooh, Gavin, such a good question. It really just scratches the surface. Here in Santa Cruz, the, the crust is around 25 kilometers thick. Um, and so this 2.2 2 .2 kilometers is less than one tenth of the way through the crust. And so while caves can be super deep in terms of like humans and how we can get into them and they're very, you know, they're very hard to access in terms of like the depth of the earth, they are just scraping the surface. Uh, but that doesn't make them any less fascinating. And so, you know, it's important. So to, to so in this, in today's episode, we're going to take a look at the caves in Santa Cruz. And we need to start by understanding how these caves form. So 
Gavin, we've talked a little bit about this on a past rock and pop up, but how do we make a cave in a place like Santa Cruz where we've got tons of marble bedrock? Well, Graham, so the marble itself is pretty, pretty uh, prone to acid. So where, where we have these acid, this acid that comes from rain, rain is slightly acidic, and it is attacking this marble because this marble really dissolves pretty easily in acid. Um, and so when rain is input at the surface, you get it percolating down through the rocks and causes these cavernous openings just from the dissolution of those rocks. Wow, yeah, that's right. And so, yeah, we often hear about acid rain and that is a huge environmental concern, but you know, to varying degrees, when we've got lots of pollution that makes our rain really acidic, but all rain picks up a little bit of acid from CO2 in the atmosphere and then it hits soils and soils are also a little bit acidic. And so it gets a little bit more acidic as it works its way down into the soil. And then as we know, these things like marble, things like limestone, these calcite rich uh, rocks are really susceptible to dissolving with acid. This is even an experiment you can do at home. If you grind up a little chalk dust and put a drop of vinegar on it, you'll see it fizz. Um, and just the same sort of thing is happening beneath the ground. And when we went on our own um, little exploration into Empire Cave, you could see all over the walls that that's all marble in there. So that's a, you know, that's a, a very Santa Cruz type bedrock. And so when we dissolve out this marble like this, Gavin, what sort of caves form? These are called karst caves, Graham. Karst is any area where you start dissolving limestone or marble and you make these very distinctive features. They're, they're very hilly places. They have big cavernous openings below the ground, but they also have things like sinkholes. And so if you see sinkholes, that's often, often indicative of having caves beneath the surface. And when I think karst, I really like to think about UCSC's campus, where there's a lot of karsting and, and involved in shaping that landscape. Yeah, definitely. And anyone who's gone for a hike up around the UCSC campus or further up into the Santa Cruz Mountains, sinkholes are very common. These deep sort of cavernous gullies are really common. All of these things are places where these, you know, karsted caves, these, you know, caverns have sort of dropped down. They've you know, the caves have collapsed in and opened up these, you know, these big openings that were sort of hollowed out in the rock beneath them. Um, and so we really, we really do recognize that, you know, we really can see all these sorts of karst uh, topographies, the geographies uh, around here in Santa Cruz. And not just what we see on the surface, but all sorts of really cool things forming karst caves. Uh, Gavin, and since I know you have a very special place in your heart for chemical sedimentary rocks, can you can you take us through these these cave features, these karst cave features? Sure, Graham. Yeah, my favorite rock type, the chemical sedimentary rock. And if you want to see what these look like in real life, you could look at our backgrounds because these are some of these cave features that we're going to be talking about. So, when you have this water percolating through the surface it finds cracks and it eventually hits the openings of the cave, usually through the ceiling of the cave. And when this water hits the cave, it actually, all of the elements that it's holding come back into rock and they form rocks. And so when you have these rocks forming on the ceiling, they look like, they look like um, icicles. And those icicles, those rock icicles in this case are called stalactites. When those droplets, fall off the stalactite, they hit the, the base of the cave and they also form rocks on the floor. So when we have these rocks forming on the floor, we call them stalagmites. Graham, what happens when you fuse stalactites and stalagmites together? Well, you get a column. So in a lot of these caves, you get these big columns and also these icicles off the top of the cave. So these are the really iconic cave features that we think about, but you also get other different features, like if water's kind of flowing through the cave, you get flow stones. And we really saw that when we went spelunking in Santa Cruz, right, Graham? Yeah, that's right. And so, yeah, all of these things, you can tell that they're forming by flowing water. You've got water flowing down off the ceiling and dripping down from stalactites. You've got 
where that water hits and, and leaves a little bit of residue and it lands. You've got your stalagmites where those grow and grow and grow till they contact each other. You get the columns and then these flow stones. You can just tell that water has been flowing over them. They've got these little ripples to them. And we actually saw all of these features when we went and checked out Empire Cave, which is part of the, the Porter Cave system up on the UC Santa Cruz campus. And so what do you say, we, we take the folks spelunking with us when we went and explored Empire Cave and, and looked at some of these cave features. Sounds fantastic, Graham. I just had such a fun day out of this. It was a really cool experience to be able to go and see the thing that we're gonna be talking about in Rock and Papa. So um, yeah. yeah, some really great pictures that you have here. Can you take us through, take us through them? Yeah, definitely. So these are all just from some of where we went into the cave. Something really neat about caves is because they're so deep underground, they're kind of insulated from the, the atmosphere and the weather above. So we went right in the middle of that, of our most recent heat wave. It was probably like 80 degrees outside. And as soon as we stepped into that cave, it was cool. It was maybe like 50 degrees. It was quite balmy. Um, and so that's, that's a real right. thing about caves. They're these kind of temperature controlled environments. They're always rather cool. Um, and then, you know, I remember also when we stepped in there, there's that sort of dank, must, musty cave smell. For me, I always, it almost reminds me of that, like, oh, what's it called? When, when you first have the rain, that's that paracore. Um, it's a sort of uh, just light, muddy smell. And so it's, it's kind of this whole sensory experience once you get in there. That's right, Graham. Yeah, there. Oh, it looks like Gavin's uh, internet cut out on him. So, so I'll take us on in our in our spelunking adventure uh, for just a little bit. So weird one word. Oh, it looks like we've got you back, Gavin. My back. Yeah, yeah, you're back. Sorry about um, that. No, no worries. So yeah, so we can let's take the the folks and show them some of the, the stuff we found in, in Empire Cave. So one of the first features we talked about were stalactites. And I always remember that those come down from the ceiling, the stalactites, they hang tight to the ceiling above them. That's right, Graham. And you can see this one on the left, it's sort of has flow structures too. You can see it's going along a crack, right? Yeah, that's right. And so it's a little lumpy, it's got some of these, uh, flow lines on them. It's only about the size of my hand. Um, we're kind of zoomed in there. Um, but one thing that is, this is actually a, a good thing to note is that in, um, in Empire Cave, a lot of the stalactites and stalagmites that would be there are missing because that has been a popular spot for people to go to in the past. And a lot of folks have taken parts of the cave with them, uh, which is kind of sad because it it has it has upset the the environment there, and we'll mention that a little bit more at the end. But you know, uh, an important thing about caving is is leaving no trace and being being conscientious in there. But you can see here, right? These like these stalactites that are coming down out of the ceiling. Uh, folks should be able to see my cursor here. You can even see this stalactite that's hanging down here is actually kind of flowing out of this this hole up there. It was probably like a, a subterranean waterfall at one point. Uh, but Gavin, what do you say we go from from the ceiling and, and hop down and look at the floor a little bit? Yeah, Graham, that sounds great. And a lot of there was a lot of cool things going on, on the floor of this cave. The flowstones themselves were just really, really interesting. And that's what you can see on this picture on the left here, right? Where you and I are looking up on this flowstone that's sort of just coming out of the ceiling and just flowing along. Yeah, and you can see in that side part of it where it's kind of broken off of there, that that thing's thick. That's almost, you know, it's probably like half to three quarters of a, of a foot uh, just in thickness of all rock that's just sort of, you know, been precipitated out, came out of solution there onto that surface as water flowed along it. And then- That's right, Craig, yeah. Yeah, and-, and you, I was just gonna add that like a lot of, a lot of the rocks that you can see in the cave are all of these flow stones. So like most of the rock you see are these precipitates. There's not much of that marble left. That's right. You definitely have to look around to see those bits of marble because so much has been coated over with these flow stones. And so this flow stone is also 
a stalagmite. And so because there's been so many of these glowstones over everything, there's not a ton of leftover stalagmites and probably a lot of them were knocked down by careless visitors. Um, but I like to remember stalagmites in that they might make it up to the ceiling. And Gavin, what happens again when they make it to the ceiling? Well, Graham, they form a column. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, and we were even able to see right on top of this flowstone, just the, the babyest little column that, that connected up to that nearby ceiling. That's right, yeah, they come in all shapes and sizes. Yeah, that's great. And so we mentioned this being a flowstone. This wasn't the only flowstone we saw. Like you said, you go to the walls and you can see in this picture on the left, you're pointing out a flowstone here, but it's almost completely covering the walls and only in a few places is that marble peeking out. That's right, Graham. You get these sort of like undulating sort of ropey textures. These are all really cool chemical sedimentary rocks. Yeah, it, it's cool how these, you know, these caves there, they're, they're opened up in the ground and then they're, they're totally resurfaced within that, that space. Uh, it's pretty neat how there's sort of this, you know, recycling of this rock as it dissolves in and, and comes in and out of solution within these cave spaces. Um, so those are the, those are the, you know, the, the things we saw. Now, when we were there, Gavin, unfortunately, well, I didn't see any wildlife in there. Did you see anything in there other than a, you know, than a, than a geologist on the loose? <laughs> no, Graham, I think that for, for my experience, we were the only life I saw down in there, but it would have been really cool because you have some like cave species that are endemic and only live in these few cave networks in the border caves, right, Graham? That's right. And so, you know, we usually think about bats being, right, our, our iconic cave dwellers, but there's all sorts of neat things that live in caves. And the Cave Gulch Network uh, up here in the Santa Cruz Mountains actually has some critters that have never been found anywhere else on Earth. And, and those include this real spooky looking Doloft cave spider. And uh, what I think is one of the most spooky creatures I've ever seen, this pseudo scorpion down here that has these like big old pincers. Um, and these, these probably only exist in these caves. That's right, Graham. Did we ever figure out what makes something a pseudo scorpion as opposed to a regular scorpion? That's a really good question. I'm guessing, you know, just looking at this thing. Now, I am no entomologist, and I'm not even sure if scorpions fall under entomology. It's just how far away from the field I am. Um, <laughs> but I don't see a little stinger, so I wonder if that's maybe part of it. Oh, that's a good guess. Yeah, but anyway, to get into the holiday spirit, ho sorry, the Halloween spirit, there's nothing spookier than these creatures. So I think that this is a good, good place to go when you're thinking about Halloween. Yeah, I agree. And, and, you know, this prompts, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, folks entering into caves. And I think this is a good point to come back to it is because these caves are really important. You know, not only are they these beautiful, you know, spaces where we can appreciate you know, these, these geologic formations, and that's important to protect those for folks to, to see and study and enjoy. But it's also really important to protect these homes because these are homes to these animals and they can't live anywhere else. They're so well adapted to these caves that if folks are, you know, cause too much of a ruckus in these caves, they really don't have anywhere else to go. So it's, a, it's important to be, you know, very careful when you go into caves. And sometimes the best way to observe a cave is just enjoying it from the outside, right? Yeah, that's right, Graham. A lot of times the caves are really cool, but they're very sensitive ecosystems. That's right. Yeah, so very important not to break things or remove things and certainly never add things, never leave trash or, or anything like that behind. So we had a great time diving down into Empire Cave, but Gavin, we, you said this at the beginning, there's a whole wonderful world of different types of caves out here. What do you say we, we hop in and, and learn about another kind of cave? That sounds great, Graham. And this is cool because I never really thought of these as caves until you actually told me about the caves you went to in Idaho, right? These are lava tubes. You get so such thick lava flows on the surface of the earth, like the one you show here on the left that it causes, it makes these big tubes, these hollow tubes, and you get 
cave systems in these volcanic rich areas, right? Yeah, that's right. And so, yeah, I had the, the good fortune a little over a year ago to get to visit a lava tube network in the Craters of the Moon National Monument um, in, in Idaho. And you see all sorts of cool cave features in there. So um, like you said, Gavin, lava is flowing and eventually it cools enough on top that it makes a little crust and that tube lava will keep flowing and eventually the lava drains out of that tube and leaves a cave behind. These volcanic caves are also called primary caves because they're forming as the rock around them forms. So they form at exactly the same time. You don't, you have no rock and no caves and then you have rock with caves in it all of a sudden. Um, but the cool thing about them is you can also form stalactites because, or stalactites, sorry, because you can get bits of, of um, lava on the ceiling and it'll ooze and drip down. And so you can make cool little structures like this one uh, that look a lot like our, our karst cave features, which I always thought was pretty neat. That is super interesting, Graham. Um, okay, cool. So that's one type of cave. Um, there's also caves that form above ground. Gavin, how can this happen? Well, Graham, I choose, I, my favorite caves are ice caves, right? Because you get areas in which ice kind of melts in the bottom and opens up into these large caverns. So that, that's, pretty, that's pretty neat and interesting. So it's the act of melting that actually makes the cave form. What yeah. about these talus caves? Yeah, these talus caves. So these form when you're up near these you know, high cliffs and big rocks and boulders are falling down and they'll actually stack up on each other. And when they're stacked up on each other, they leave these open void spaces in them. And we've got rock above and we've got open space below. And so these actually meet our definition of a cave even though it's not sort of a continuous covering of, of rock, but you are, you know, beneath this, this um, as Jal just, we would call it a regolith surface of just big chunks of rock and without actually, you know, diving under that soil surface, be traveling through caves. And this actually comes from a, a pretty local spot. This picture we've got here is from Pinnacles National Park, uh, where you can enjoy some, some talus caves not too far from home. Graham, super interesting, these talus caves. And I've actually was just in one of these not, not a couple months ago. And it was really the most fascinating thing for me was that it was so covered in areas it had such a large rock cover that it actually was cooler. The air was cooler than the air outside. So you get very similar sort of things going on in, in even these caves. Wow, yeah. So all sorts of, of great, great features like that. Well, Gavin, I feel like we've, I think we've done our caves some justice. Uh, and so I think now's a, a great point to uh, wish everyone a, a happy and spooky and safe Halloween. Oh, the greatest holiday of them all, Halloween. I hope everybody enjoys it and enjoyed our walk through some very spooky geologic features. Super spooky. Um, and yes, we love Halloween around here. I put a link in the comments um, about another Halloween event that we've got tomorrow because we're doing a whole lineup of events for the Museum of the Macabre. Um, so tomorrow we're gonna be exploring macabre mushrooms. So um, make sure to register for that. And thanks again, uh, gents, for doing this special pop-up. This is um, uh, outside of our normal schedule, but we'll be back again next week. What are we talking about next week? Next week, we're going to be talking about continents. So at the beginning of this week, or uh, sorry, of this last month, we talked a little bit about how continents moved around to make our, um, to make the, the east coast of the US and the Appalachian Mountains. But we thought we'd dig in a little bit deeper to think about how continents come apart and go back together, how oceans open and close over geologic time. And we'll even talk about supercontinents. So I think that'll be a pretty exciting, pretty exciting story. Sorry, I'm leaning down here because the sun's right in my eyes. So oh, I'm a very casual <laughs> stance to close it up. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I had thought going back to caves for a second. I um, was curious about the talus caves myself too, because 
I had heard that they're not like true caves. They're is there a difference between caverns and caves, or is it all semantics? To me, it's all semantics. I just thought caves was short for caverns, but there might be folks out there who know a lot more about those words than I do. Okay, good to know, good to know. Um, yeah, and I too have been to Craters of the Moon National Monument in Idaho, and whoa. I mean, you're driving through just to, like pasture land and, uh, you know, it's, it's Idaho, and then all of a sudden you're on the moon. <laughs> it's it's wild like that. You it does feel like you're on the moon. I've even heard that like they did that like when the Apollo program was working, they did test runs of some of the um, like buggies and stuff like that on those landscapes there because they thought that would be their their closest analog here on Earth. Yeah, yeah. It's neat that we've got so many different types of. Um, of geologic features like that, like pretty close and pinnacles, um, that's right around the corner. So yeah. people, I don't know if pinnacles is open right now, but one of these days <laughs> y'all can go explore. Um, well, thanks again, uh, everyone. Thanks again for uh, tuning in too. And we will be back next week for, um, uh, to talk about super continents. It's gonna be super and happy Halloween. Stay safe. See you next